Everyone has a habit that they wish they didn't have. And everyone has a habit that they want to build, but for some reason can never get themselves to stick to it. Perhaps you've also read books like The Power of Habit and discovered that all habits are formed in a loop. Cue routine reward. And you're probably all too familiar with the feeling of getting excited about your brand new habit loop and habit tracker only to be very disappointed that it doesn't stick for more than a couple of weeks. And you've also probably tried to quit bad habits or even replace bad habits with good habits and also been incredibly disappointed with those results. I felt trapped like this for years and I always felt so frustrated with myself. I knew all the theory I could sit and talk to you for hours and hours about habits, but for some reason I could never break my habit of social media over usage and I could never build the good habits of regularly exercising, meditating, or reading books. I knew I was missing a piece of the puzzle. Well, if that sounds like you, after years of searching, I have found the answer. And this video is that missing piece of the puzzle you've been looking for. It turns out we were looking at it all wrong. Habits were merely the byproduct of what we should have been focusing on. And let me tell you, what we should have been focusing on is literally 10 times more effective than habits. And I'm gonna discuss that with you at the end of this video. This is the secret to effortless behavior change. Right off the bat, I wanted to know the difference between a successful habit formed in the brain and an unsuccessful habit. Why was my habit of scrolling social media so ingrained in my brain but my habit of trying to exercise could just fall apart so easily? So I read the book Hooked which explores how apps such as TikTok and Instagram have actually used the habit loop to successfully build really ingrained habits in literally billions of people. And for one, they were talking about an extra step in the habit loop that was only very briefly discussed in The Power of Habit. In between cue and routine, we also have craving. In this stage, the brain is anticipating the reward. Dopamine starts releasing and it builds up and builds up, craving that reward until eventually we do the routine and the craving is satiated. I noticed right away, as soon as I read this, that I had no craving anytime I was exposed to my cue for, you know, exercising or reading books. No craving whatsoever. But as soon as I got a notification on my phone, I could literally feel my brain start to crave to pull out my phone and just check what that notification was, right? I could genuinely feel that craving. Maybe my rewards for exercising weren't strong enough. Maybe I should have been using a tasty or smoothie every single time I worked out. No. The main problem was that the rewards I was giving myself or the habits I was trying to build were not integral to the routine I was trying to build. By giving myself a smoothie for working out or giving myself a donut every time I read, I was actually a habit stacking, not habit building. As soon as you're exposed to the cue for working out, your brain is going to crave the smoothie not working out itself. Now you may say, but Jamie, I'm genuinely only allowing myself to drink that smoothie if I work out. But it doesn't really work that way. Your brain's not that stupid. It knows it doesn't have to actually work out to get the smoothie. It knows that you can just walk into the kitchen make yourself a smoothie and drink it. And therefore the habit has been short-circuited and the routine isn't actually working out, it's creating slash drinking the smoothie. Best case scenario, you fail to build a habit of working out. Worst case scenario, you become addicted to smoothies. So the reward needs to be integral to the routine itself and it cannot be external. So how did the social media apps do this? Well, they made their apps so addicting by making them band-aids for negative emotions. For example, Without realizing it, Instagram and TikTok have become your pacifiers for boredom. This then single-handedly covers the habit loop in one swell swoop. The cue is feeling bored. You then crave the reward of getting rid of that boredom. Boredom feels more and more annoying as your brain releases dopamine, craving that sweet release of boredom. You then take out your phone, unlock it, and start swiping the apps. The routine, your brain then gets stimulated by the novelty of the latest post or meme that you've never seen before, and thus, your boredom has been removed. The reward. And this is just one example, but social media apps prey on all kinds of negative emotions. For example, Snapchat and Tinder are used as pacifiers for loneliness. Whenever you feel lonely, 
you go on those apps to get rid of that feeling. And this is also why it's so incredibly difficult to break these bad habits or addictions. So many people think it's as easy as just removing the cue, right? Like just turning off your notifications will break your addiction to social media because the habit's broken, right? But only 10% of cues are actually external. 90% of cues come internally, as we just explored. Whenever you feel those negative emotions, that is the cue acting up in your body to then want to go on those apps to get rid of those negative emotions. There are now neural pathway grooves in your brain that mean every single time you experience a negative emotion, you're going to crave getting rid of it, no matter what. Habits can never be totally destroyed, okay? The only thing you can actually do is keep the cue, craving, and reward the same, but replace it with a different routine. So for example, whenever you feel bored, instead of going on social media apps, you could replace it with working on a business or working on you know, some kind of uh, fruitful activity and that could satiate your boredom. Or every time you felt lonely, instead of going on Tinder, you could just go out and socialize with friends in real life. But all this talk about habits is literally completely pointless unless you understand this one thing that is literally 10 times more powerful than building habits. And it is at the foundation of human behavior and human behavior change your beliefs. Depending on your beliefs and your values and basically how you see the world, that will determine what you do on a daily basis far more than any habit look. Imagine you had a Christian and an atheist. A Christian will go to church every Sunday effortlessly. It doesn't matter if they're feeling bad, it doesn't matter if the weather's not nice, they will make the effort to go to church every Sunday. Whereas an atheist, it doesn't matter if they try to build the perfect habit look, they're using all the habit trackers in the world, if they don't actually believe in God and believe in the actual reasons of why they should be going to church, then eventually they're going to stop going to church, no matter how hard you try. Habits are much more connected to your beliefs than to the actions themselves. In the Journal of Consulting and Clinical Psychology, studies show that whenever we think about doing an activity, our brain immediately imagines what it would be like to actually do that activity. And then, depending on your beliefs, when your brain imagines doing that activity, it will either generate a positive emotion or a negative emotion. If it's a positive emotion, you'll do the activity. If it's a negative emotion, you'll avoid the activity. Meaning if you change your beliefs about an activity, you'll change the emotions that come up whenever you think about doing that activity, and thus you'll change whether or not you do that activity consistently. So for example, perhaps you've been struggling to build a habit of reading a book per week. You sit down on a Monday evening, ready to read a book but you have a subconscious belief that reading books is boring. So whenever your brain imagines you reading that book, it produces a negative emotion. Therefore, you don't read the book. If, however, you had the belief that reading books was fun and you had the life value that learning regularly is really, really important, then whenever you imagine yourself reading that book, your brain will produce a positive emotion and you'll do it. Over a long enough period of time, a habit of reading would just naturally form. You wouldn't need to build the habit loops, they'd form themselves. So how are these limiting beliefs formed and how do you change them? Mark Manson also discusses this topic in his book, Everything is F***ed. And in it, he states, your identity will stay your identity until you have an experience that proves otherwise. Basically meaning it's all good and well me telling you books are incredibly fun to read, go read them, they're great until you actually experience for yourself books being genuinely fun to read, you will continue to have the belief that they're boring. With one caveat. You see, there are two types of beliefs. Beliefs based on your previous experiences and social beliefs. Social beliefs come from an evolutionary advantage where our brain wants us to be accepted by our tribe to survive and so it will convince us to believe what everyone else in the tribe believes. Here's a common scenario that you might have even fallen into yourself regarding social beliefs. A kid is born and brought up in a certain religion. Obviously, in their early years of life, they believe in that religion because everyone they speak to, all of their family, believes in that religion. Then they go to school and meet a lot of people who don't believe in that religion or maybe don't believe in religion at all. And as they become friends with those people, their social tribe changes. And as their social tribe changes, so does their beliefs. Whether you realize it or not, you very likely have at least a couple of beliefs that are very, very heavily influenced by the people you spend most of your time with. But you can use this to your advantage. Think about it. If everyone that you spoke to suddenly just adopted the belief that reading books was one of the most fun things you could ever do, and they were all reading a book a week, talking about it all the time, their favorite books, do you think you would continue to have the belief that reading books is boring? And you think you would continue to procrastinate on reading books? Of course not. You would literally start reading like almost like that. 
Whenever your beliefs change, the way you view the world changes, and this is known as a paradigm shift. So if there's one habit you've been struggling to build or one habit you've been struggling to break, a paradigm shift is the key to making that change as soon as possible with as little effort as possible. Here's what I want you to do. Take a moment to reflect on that habit until you identify the negative belief you have for the habit that you're trying to build or you identify the positive belief you have for the habit you're trying to break. Some common examples are reading is boring, exercising is painful, my idea will never be as good in reality as it is in my head, um, I need drink to have fun. I need, I need smoking to calm my nerves. Once you've identified the negative belief you have surrounding that habit or beliefs, you then want to identify the positive belief that you need to adopt in order to change your paradigm. And of course, if you're trying to break a bad habit, you would just do the opposite. So let's say you were trying to quit drinking and you realized that you have the belief that you need to drink in order to have fun. Well, then you would realize that by swapping that, that you need to adopt the belief that you can have just as much fun without drinking. Now that you've identified the new belief that you need to take on in order to change your behavior, you want to find and surround yourself with people who all already have this belief. Surround yourself with them. Talk with them as much as possible, even if they're all online. Just spend as much time with them as possible. After a while, you'll start to develop that belief as a social belief. Once that social belief has been developed and you start executing on that habit consistently, eventually, you're probably going to have an experience or multiple experiences that actually prove that belief to be true. An experience that proves the belief that reading is fun. An experience that proves the belief that ideas are better in reality than they are in your head. And remember the quote from Mark Manson earlier? Your identity will stay your identity until you have an experience that proves otherwise. At this point, if you fall in the process, you'll have had multiple experiences that prove otherwise. Changing your beliefs won't only cause really positive behavior change, but it can also help a lot with mental illnesses of all kinds. If you change your beliefs, you will quite literally change your life. If you like this video, I would really, really appreciate it if you let me know in the comments, if you liked and subscribed as well, because I've got so many more video ideas that I cannot wait to do. I'm so excited, there's so much stuff coming up on this channel. Make sure you stay tuned and I'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.